Hi guys, so as the previous aircraft instrument here done was quite uh, empty as it was a fake instrument here is a real one which will be interesting we have here a fuel flow in uh, LB per minute uh, where the imperial unit with um, so we have needed for the fuel flow on the totalizer for the fuel used so as you can see, it is a square instrument. It is made by Elliott Company in uh, Great Britain. Elliott Company was uh, responsible for making uh, electronics instruments on the computers. You can find on the web a vintage photo of a huge computer being uh, transported outside the Elliott factory. So if I find it again, I will uh, link in the description of this photo. So we have an indicator flow rate on fuel used, type 7802-32000, serial number 098-72, so 72 may be the manufacturing date. We have the um, military uh, reference number here, and the broad arrow uh, logo here for uh, military uh, British military hardware. So it came probably from a bomber or something like this. Power supply requirements here. This plug is not original. When I got the instrument, in fact, it was missing the plug. So I found a quite a matching one, I guess. I hope at least matching the screw holes. So where I got this instrument, I got it in the antiques market in the north of Paris, in Saint-Denis, north of Paris. And in fact, it is one of my first ever S-Craft instrument I did purchase. It was back in 1996 or something like this. So I had this one for a very long time. Uh, here we have two probably trim pots each side. Here at the back there is a vent, some uh, piece of mesh for uh, alloying probably moisture to get outside or something like this. We have here the weird uh, British screws with a hole in the middle. They are really not uh, good these screws because the, the the indent uh, strips very easily in them. And on the top here we have a service and repair division tag from EA. Not sure if it is for English Airlines. Date quoted 22 February of 1975. There is also a stamp here. So I will remove the number of body screws and we will be able to have a look inside. Okay, the screws are removed. So first, you can notice the, the connector is mounted on this uh, right angle uh, piece here. It is quite unusual, but I did see it several times on uh, British instruments. So it must be a thing with uh, British uh, instruments. Not sure why they do this. And here is what we have inside. Very nice uh, aluminum cover with a welded uh, back, back side. And here is the thing. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of uh, actuators and a set of uh, free PCBs. I do not know if it is necessary to take it apart further or if we can see everything interesting here. I guess it will be good like so. So we have first PCB, precision resistors, trim pot, old school, very old school transistors here. 
I see a glass body inside this transistor and they are mounted on these uh, brackets. I'm not sure if I will have a number behind. No, no, yes, a little number here. OC202. So they are really, really old school germanium transistors, I believe. The circuit board is quite uh, quite thick on the uh, epoxy circuit board already. Quite uh, old looking uh, resistors here also. We have here this metal uh, piece and I can see on the other side we have some uh, a pair of uh, transformers uh, attached to it all here at the bottom. So yes, here you have uh, a uh, trimmer, multi-tank uh, potentiometer probably, fixed to the back plane. Some uh, terminal uh, board here, with what seems to be four more uh, germanium transistors attached to it. With here uh, brass piece probably, it's zinc piece attached to the rear rear part of the body. We have here one other PCB with uh, this one is mounted with a multi-pin connector here with more old school components bus bar here ground bus bar. Uh, where the very long and very thin uh, piece here seems to be a capacitor. Here we have one CV7044 transistor. This thing is really old school. One where the green resistor here you can see with irregular shape, not uh, something you see every day. And it is all uh, for the circuit boards. Here we have a resistor something with a serial number stamped on it. So it must be a quite a special resistor made by Kitay Romford. Here we have more Kitay Romford stuff. This is a tachometer generator. So some kind of uh, synchro transmitter, probably resolver, synchro transmitting the feedback, feedback for the. Uh, so we must have a motor somewhere. Not sure. Is it behind this? Mm, does not look like. We have here. Uh, Vactric control equipment uh, thing made in uh, Surrey, England, more than Surrey, England. We have here all the gearworks. So one of them must be a motor, in fact, driving a wall clock uh, mechanism here, a well, uh, set of gears responsible for uh, driving the needle on the front. And also incrementing this uh, counter, probably. We have here something interesting. It is a rotating uh, piece. So this rotating piece is uh, mechanically connected to the gears here and probably uh, some of the motor somewhere. If I am rotating it, you can see the needle is moving. And the counter is incrementing also. I will put it back to the, where it was originally because I got it in this position, so it is the history of this device. So it seems we have a disc in the middle here of tiny, yes, magnets. So it looks like it is an aluminium disc. And the eddy currents generated when this piece with magnets is turning makes the disc to spin also. 
and uh, drives the front part of the mechanism with a needle. It is quite a weird system, but in fact it is a common system. I have seen it and to many other aircraft instruments. Rotating piece uh, driving magnets around uh, uh, the metal disc and the eddy currents do the, do the work. It is really... Probably you can find uh, patterns about this system, all patterns, or Wikipedia articles or something like this. So here you can see the nice uh, structural pieces of the thing, aluminum plates, coupling nuts here, allowing to remove, it seems, the front part of the body. Yes, I will not do it because it will be very interesting pair, uh, uh, apart from revealing the dial piece but on this little board here we have uh, three capacitors it looks like I am not sure if the thing is fitted with a backlight or not it does not look like we have any wires going to the front so since we have no backlight so this part here uh, it's just an empty box with the wires going to the connector and you can see very small nuts here for uh, securing this board with uh, little brackets springs here to uh, accommodate exactly the cover they are a little uh, bent but and uh, yes so this is uh, all maybe I can try to remove this PCB here as it is mounted on the connector we will see not sure but can try so it is really 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 British thing it will not come off because uh, there are many more screws to remove, so I will not do it. Anyway, we have, we, there is nothing to see in the middle, truss wires and uh, two uh, brown transformers here at the bottom. Secured the one with these screws and one with tabs, which seems to be uh, stuck with very hard epoxy. Okay, so... Here we are, what uh, else, I will put this back in place, at least like this, the front uh, piece here is also attached with 8 screws all around, and it allows to replace the glass probably, I guess, and there is not much more, so it is very heavy and well made uh, instrument, very old school electronics, Oh, very nice uh, mechanics too in this uh, thing. You can see these really nice aluminum pieces here. So you do not see stuff like this very often. And it is an old one too. What is the serial number on this thing? Uh, yes, 098 dash here. 72. So it is not a big uh, batch, it seems. And this one was well, in the first hundred of them anyway. Okay, so I hope you did uh, enjoy this teardown uh, of the old uh, British uh, fuel flow instrument. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.